In this presentation we are going to look at density plots and this is from the ggplot R package. Okay, so I'm just going to call ggplot there, call it as a library, library ggplot. I'm also going to call dplyr because I'm going to do something later on where dplyr will help me get it done. So first off, the key thing here is geom density. That is the, the fundamental geom that we need to create density plots. Density plots are like univariate graphical analyses to look at the density of a distribution. So they're sort of contain the same sort of information as histograms, but I think, you know, they're better than histograms. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use a data set called diamonds, okay, which is an inbuilt data set in ggplot. Now I'm going to pick one of these variables. No, not for any particular reason. I'll just pick carrot just to have a look at that. Okay, the first one. Okay, let's actually just get a summary of diamonds. There we go. Actually, let's just go back a bit. So carrot seems to go from 0 0.2 to 5.01. Okay, let's actually just get the summary of that. That particular, I mean, you, we could go into more detail there. Okay. So the third quartile is 1.04 and the maximum is 5.1. Okay, that's interesting. So it seems to be a very skewed distribution. Okay, now, so the, so let's start off. The fundamental thing is to do is to create our fundamental layer, okay, using ggplot, okay? So there's two things we have to do data equals and then state the variables that we're going to use. So x equals caret in this instance. Okay. Now, if I run that, I just get a packet, uh, get a, gets a bit of output, but it doesn't really help. Okay. So, and I'm also going to take this on a very layered basis. Okay. So I'm going to save that. You can almost uh, visualize that or consider that as a canvas of a painting, if you get me. Like wood, canvas stretched over some wood so that we can paint on it. So anyway, so let's actually work away here and actually fit our geom density. And there we go, just give that a second there. That is our density plot. Okay, now it doesn't look, really look great. I mean, there's more things we can do with it to enhance the look of it, but fundamentally that is what we're looking for. So let's just say for argument's sake, I wanted to compare distributions. Do you know what, sorry, I'm gonna come back to that in a second. And what I could do here is actually just sort of say, PC uh, line type equals two, and color equals red. Just to show you that I can enhance the color there, okay, and thickness. I was gonna pause that down for a second and bring that up, there we go. You know, color is red, line type equals two. There's line width actually as well. That's actually what I really meant to do. Line width equals two, just to make it look thicker. Okay, there we go. That's, that's actually probably too thick, but there you go. It's That's how you would go about it. Just all those little enhancements that you can do when you, in this argument here. Okay, now I'm gonna step back a bit. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is just let's look at diamonds again. Okay, so we have another variable here. We've actually quite, got quite a few variables here, but I'm particularly interested in this variable here called cut. Okay, now it's a categorical variable. It's actually an ordered factor. Okay, so let's just say for argument's sake, I want to see the distribution of carrot for all of these dot types of cut. So I have to move back a little bit to here and I can go color equals cut. Okay, so let's just see uh, what that does. So there we go. I, do, I don't need to put in any enhancements anymore. Okay, so I mean the palette is not great, but ultimately that is what we're looking for. So you can actually change the palette. It's actually, it's the, the, the color scheme is terrible, I'll be frank but it's possible to change the palette, okay? So there's other things you can sort of do with that, but I think actually I've sort of hit my marks mostly. Oh yeah, so there's one more thing I'm going to do. 
So, I mean, I'm going to leave that there for a second and just suggest, su- suggest that we can put in different palettes. Now, uh, that's, a, uh, that's actually going to be a, a subject of a different video. Just make it a little bit easier to follow. Okay. So, what I'm going to do actually now is I'm going to split up the Diamonds data set into two different data frames. Okay. So, I'm going to have Diamonds 1. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is just Diamonds Sample Frac 20%. And diamonds to forty percent. Okay, so let's just say, for argument's sake, I have two different data frames. So I have diamonds one and diamonds two. Now there might be a little bit of overlap just due due to the way that I created them, but like I, I the idea is that they are two separate data frames uh, containing similar sorts of information. Okay, so let's just say, for argument's sake, if I wanted to have two overlapping density plots from two different data frames, how do I do that? Well, what we do here is start off with ggplot, but we don't actually name our data sets that we're using in there. What we could do is go uh, data equals diamonds1, uh, name our aesthetics, again x equals carrot, and Carrot doesn't actually, I mean, by accident, they will have both have the same names, but they don't actually necessarily have to have the same names. I'm going to go line width equals 1.2 and color equals red for this one here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to a new line here and do the same thing again for the other data set. Okay, jom density uh, data equals diamonds two uh, for for the most part everything else now is is the same x equals carrot line width equals 1.2 and color equals let's go for blue i have that a little bit bunched up anyway it, it, it's two different data frames so let's see how that turns out there we go now, necessarily, they were always going to have the same sort of distribution. We sort of expected that, really. Okay, but we can see that they do match up, and for two variables from two different sources can be sort of compared against each other, which I think is very useful. That's probably the most useful uh, way of looking at it. All right, I'm going to leave it there.